Well, this is Blender, and I'm using uh, something with Blender called Blender Cam. Blender Cam allows you to make the uh, tooling paths for doing certain things. If you look, here's the just the uh, 3D model that I made in Blender. Um, I actually made it using uh, Inkscape to make a vector version of a 2D image. And then in Blender you can import the uh, SVG file from... Uh, from Inkscape, assuming you made it a, uh, I forget what they call it in Inkscape, but it's basically you make it a, a vector shape that can be, you know, resized and all that good stuff. And uh, then you can import it into here as 3D data. Um, then you have to convert that from a shape to a mesh, but that's a whole other video. <laughs> Look up Blender for tutorials for that, but basically. Here's the uh, the image, and uh, I'm, I'm, I wanted to make a border around it so when it cuts, it just cuts it in that shape around this thing. Unfortunately, just having a single layer uh, didn't work, so I had to like make this like a double-sided wall kind of thing. And then, uh, you'll see here... There's kind of uh, a gap where the, uh, see how it's wider? Uh, I'm probably going to have to cut that out a little bit with a knife. It won't be too thick, fortunately. But uh, unfortunately, that was the best way I could get this to make that border the way I wanted to. Ideally, I wouldn't even have it on the other side of that thick line. It would just be in the thin line there. That's what I really wanted. But uh, the way Blender Cam works, this is about the best you, I can do, at least, that I could figure out. So, um, Blender Cam is a little tricky to work with. I think the first thing you want to do is set up your machine setup. And that's down here. I have this preset saved. I highly recommend just saving a preset after you set it for your, your machine. Um, it's 0.3 meters, it's basically 300 millimeters, uh, 180 millimeters, and 45 millimeters there for the work area. Make this a little bigger here. So, uh, these are your feed rate. I have it set to 100 millimeters per minute right now. Um, it's a small, tiny little 45 millimeter drill bit that I plan. If you look at the cutter size here, point, actually it's 0.45 millimeter uh, drill bit edge. So uh, even the 100 millimeter per second is slow, but I have it um, also only stepping down one millimeter at a time. So that should help. Uh, so I'm I'm just gonna go down the list here and. Just mention anything I know about any of these options. There's there's a lot of options. Uh, this operation is what you have to you have to hit plus there. Kind of gets everything started. It picks a uh, object. Typically, it's the object you want, but sometimes it might pick a different one depending on circumstances. I mean, you can also change this to groups of objects. I never really mess with that much. Um, auto export is on by default. I always turn it off because uh, the generating generating the G code takes a minute. Um, one thing about that though is that the uh, uh, the operation time here value will not update until you export the G code. So if you change some things around and you want to see that time update, you're going to have to export the G code. It might be easier to auto export if you were trying to specifically edit that time a bit um, the next is the operation setup this profile cutout is what I find to be the most useful I have had luck with a lot of other these different types and they're pretty neat with different models with this particular model I don't know if it's because it lacks the uh, an actual back to it it just kind of goes for infinity there or what but for whatever reason the uh, 
<clears throat> the profile cutout strategy set the outside is, is the only one that's really useful to get that milled out the way that I'm trying to do it. Um, this outlines count is basically the uh, number of outlines that it makes. Jeez. <coughs> Outline count is uh, the number of outlines that it traces here. So if I had it less than 8, it might not be. As a matter of fact, it could maybe... Looks like a 9 would have been maybe useful in that spot there to fill in the middle of that cir uh, triangle, but it'll be such a tiny amount of wood if it's left over, it could easily be cut out. Distance between tool paths is the distance between those paths, so if I had made that a little wider, it would have filled that in better, but it also would have cleared the... Uh, the material less evenly and consistently from the uh, from the surface there it's direction inside out I'm pretty sure that means it starts on the inside and works its way outwards this cam optimization is very important but I never really mess with it much This operation area is important because it's basically setting the height. Um, I'm telling it here to step down one millimeter at a time. And I'm manually setting the depth of the operation since it doesn't really have a depth itself. I usually leave that default. I'm not really sure what any of that does. I usually put the plunge speed down lower, especially if I'm using a smaller drill bit like the 0.45 millimeter one I'm using here. And that size is set right here. Um, there's no way to set the length of the tool. I guess it just generically figures out the length. I'm not sure how that works, but it seems to work. I don't know. I never made anything too deep. Here's that machine preset again that I've already preset for the 3018 Pro. Call it size there is talking about the size of the uh, diameter of the uh, thing that you put the drill bit into basically. This option here uh, to position the object is really important um, so when you first import something so I just imported this in the here and it's just kinda hanging out anywhere um, if you hit that position object button it's gonna put it right in the right position and what that does is it uh, it puts it basically at zero for the g-code if you don't do that it might be really hard to determine exactly where the machine's going to start cutting at and everything. If you do this, it simplifies it a lot because I can tell basically it's going to start right here, right in the corner where that little line is uh, sticking out there. I should also mention that this. Uh, The blender dimensions are going to give me the correct dimensions in the real world, I believe, uh, since my machine is set up properly. This uh, 0.782 meter. This is basically saying this is 78.2 millimeters by 12 millimeters. Um, so it's a really, really tiny really really tiny cut um, it should be interesting to see how the machine does it and that's exactly why it's set to take six hours here because I have it dropping just one millimeter down three it's doing three passes and I do have it going relatively slow since it's uh, a tiny 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 little drill bit and uh, it's obviously it's got to do a lot of passes 
if you look at the uh, you know per depth pass it's got to do a lot of these ring passes so it will take a little while but hopefully it won't destroy the uh, drill bit we'll see so these are the bits the bits I was originally going to use I was going to use that 0.45 millimeter one and uh, they're really brittle brittle I'm just gonna like I could probably just snap that off of my finger right now yeah like really not hard to do so <laughs> um, these drill pro ones I mean it helps that they're a lot bigger but I also I couldn't break that if I tried so you know the thickness helps a lot <laughs> but these seem to be better either way uh, so I'm going to use this one millimeter bit. I think it's the smallest one I have that's durable enough to hopefully hold up. Um, but it's going to make the pattern a little less uh, a little less detailed. I'm going to move that to eight millimeter. Oh no, the cutter diameter. That's got to be one millimeter. And if you put one millimeter in here. It'll automatically change it to its the meters there. Um, then there's a distance between tool paths. Set that here to point eight millimeters. There. How about point point seven millimeters? <laughs> um, we'll see. I'm going to keep this step down still really shallow. Alright, and you can see there it's going to make it a little less detailed. But it looks like it might still do a decent job. It's not going to cut out anything in between there. So, no, not really. I'm gonna have to make this bigger. I'm just gonna hit S here and scale this up a bit. How big does it say it is right now? 193. So it's 193 millimeters wide. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, Position object, and we'll see. We'll see if that uh, hmm, yeah, that'll work. Mill that out a bit. Just gonna uh export that G code and it's just since it's operation one it's just gonna output a file called operation one here and uh, my little offline controller does not like this NGC <coughs> file format I'll just change it to NC and that'll work I'll just make it uh, I adjusted the plunge speed to 50 percent whatever that means <laughs> and I adjusted the feed rate to 200 millimeters per second I'm sorry per minute that's what that means feed rate maximum per slash minute is how much uh, millimeters per minute the thing will move while it's milling and then I had to actually change that here as well there's a cam feed rate up here so if you change both of those recalculate the path and then export the g-code uh, cut the time from seven hours to three hours, and that should be reasonable. I'm using this uh, offline controller, it's called, with the 3018 Pro machine. It's just this little box that connects to the controller board. Um, it works basically like everything else you would use to control a CNC machine. Um, you can use the control function to move the bit around, move the wood around and everything to get the bit where you want it to be for the zero point. And then you want to get the uh, the z-axis, the height of the bit, g 
just barely above the wood typically um you know like not touching the wood but like basically touching it um and then i basically just reset the machine um, and when you turn it back on that sees that point at zero there so that zeroes it out and then you're good to go to send the g-code So the blender cam said it was going to take three hours and ten minutes to do. It actually wound up taking like six and a half hours to do. Um, it took longer than it probably needed to between um, when it was doing an operation and when it would lift up. It would go way high and then maybe take a while to start back up again. I don't think the offline controller slowed it down at all. I think it just estimated the time wrong because of something that was taking a little longer than it expected. Um, but it worked pretty good. Um, this is really like just kind of scratching the surface of what blender cam can do um it's really neat software i do plan on um, possibly making some more videos about it in the future um you know because like fusion 360 is great and all but you know subscription based software is expensive and free cat i couldn't get to do quite what i was trying to do with this to uh didn't seem to want to work quite well for this although free is really good for some cnc type stuff Yeah, I like bordered when I modeled the thing in Blender, it had that border around it, and Blender said that that was 125 millimeters across. And I measured it up when it was done here, and it said it was pretty much 125 millimeters across. So that worked pretty well. Um, that's worked that way because the machine is set up properly to the proper steps per millimeter, which happens to be 800 steps for this machine. Um, when you set it like that, then when you tell Blender to do 125 millimeters, it knows what it's talking about, basically. Um, and I use that one millimeter bit instead of the 0.45 millimeter bit because that was just way too brittle, and that's about the as defined as you can get with one millimeter. Looks like. <laughs> 